Yeah, it's not religion I'm afraid of, it's people. <laughs> what they do in the name of religion. I'm, uh, I'm reminded of the comedian Emo Phillips story he tells, uh, I think he titled it Heretic. He said, I was walking across a bridge one day and I saw a man standing on the edge about to jump. I ran over to him and I said, stop, don't do it. Why shouldn't I, he said. I said, well, there's so much to live for. He said, like what? I said, well, are you religious or atheist? He said, religious. I said, me too. Are you Christian or Buddhist? He said, Christian. I said, me too. Are you Catholic or Protestant? He said, Protestant. I said, me too. Are you Episcopalian or Baptist? He said, Baptist. And I said, me too. Are you Baptist Church of God or Baptist Church of the Lord? And he said, Baptist Church of God? And I said, me too. Are you original Baptist Church of God or reformed Baptist Church of God? And he said, reformed Baptist Church of God. And I said, me too. Well, are you Reformed Baptist Church of God Reformation 1879 or Reformed Baptist Church of God 1915? And he said, Reformed Baptist Church of God Reformation 1915. And I said, die heretic scum. And I pushed him off the bridge. (laughs) Now, that's just a joke, <laughs> but in real life, I mean, real life is full of people who have or are killing each other over religious differences. The joke pokes particular fun of Christian churches that have been dividing up for centuries over fine points of theology and practice. Each thinks that they're right, and by definition, that the others are heretical. Now, if people who are of the same religion, the same country, the same denomination, sometimes even the same church, cannot agree on what's heresy and what's not, who ultimately gets to decide who's a heretic? It's been said that one generation's heretics are the next generation's heroes. Heck, Jesus was a heretic in his own times. And and for that matter, so was Buddha. Both of them went against the beliefs of the cultures and the people who they were born into. Now to bring it a little closer to home, Ten years, about ten years ago, Rick, you can you, you remember this that the staff of All Souls arrived one morning to church to find the word heresy spray painted in big letters on the garden gate over here on the outside of the garden gate. Now, of course, when you're spray painting under the cover of darkness, you don't have the benefit of spell check. So, <laughs> I think they actually wrote he- hearsay. But the point was made, according to this person, all souls goes against the understanding of what he believes is godly and faithful. Now, apparently he, or I guess it could be a she, somehow I doubt it. How many people were thinking a she when you, when you heard that story with spray paint? Okay, all right, one guy, all right. <laughs> For this person, uh, Defacing a church, apparently, is godly and uh, faithful. But Unitarians have been deemed heretics by others since the Spanish doctor Michael Servetus was burned at the stake in 1553 in Geneva by John Calvin. He, he used, uh, they used green wood to burn him at the stake so that it would smolder slowly and torturously in hopes that he would recant and save his own eternal life. So 
from their standpoint, they used that green wood that was an act of love. Uh, Also, since Hungarian David Francis died imprisoned in in a dungeon for the crime of innovation a couple centuries after Servetus in Hungary. So here in the United States, shortly after the Revolutionary War, in and around Boston and Concord and emanating from leading scholars at Harvard, there was a growing sense that in this new democracy, religion needs to employ reason and intellect, science and history, and could not simply be rooted in old creeds and unquestioned pre-scientific doctrines. So these revolutionary thinkers came to be called Unitarians by their critics because like Servetus and Francis before them, they found no strong argument in the Bible for the Trinity. My colleague Frank Schulman writes, in the early 1800s, the Boston heresy, as it was known, spread quickly. A radical change was taking place in Boston religion, great change and quickly. Calvinism was being replaced by Unitarianism. Unitarian William Ellery Channing was taking the place of the prolific Puritan preacher and pamphleteer Jonathan Edwards, and Ralph Waldo Emerson was ascending into the pulpit that was, had been led by Cotton Mather, who helped spark the Salem witch trials. It was rapid and significant change. Conservative Christians saw Unitarianism as a movement to be stopped, but church after church converted to this new religion all across New England, the famous King's Chapel, the first Anglican church in this country, took the tenets and the name Unitarian. So did the Church of the Pilgrim Fathers in Plymouth. So did hundreds of churches in towns throughout New England. These new churches broke with old customs and insisted on religious freedom. They wanted religious freedom because they were confident in the goodness of open and free debate as long as flames could not be sent, set to the dissenters and as long as damp prison cells did not await heretics. But what was the foundation of this heresy? Shulman identifies four things. Belief in one God, indivisible. Belief in the goodness of all people, which was opposed to the popular idea of the time that people are all tainted with original sin and depravity from the moment of birth. The use of reason to understand the Bible and the world. And fourth, the duty of people to do justice, to take seriously the commandment to love our neighbors as ourselves. This was the heresy. There's one God. People are born good. Use reason and religion. Do justice. They proclaimed we and the world would not be saved by belief in a creed or a savior. They argued that we and our world would only be saved by people acting justly and using reason to understand the world around us. These ideas led many prominent Unitarians of the time to become leaders in the anti-slavery and abolition movements. While at the same time, churches like the Southern Baptists, who were calling the Unitarians heretics and trying to stop them, were using the Bible to endorse the atrocious practice of chattel slavery which ultimately led to a brutal and deadly civil war. So using the Bible or using, yeah, the Bible to preach God, goodness, reason, and justice, 
or using the Bible to preach that the kidnapping and enslavement of people is ordained by God, which one seems like heresy today? Providing, uh, uh, proving, I should say, the point that the heretics of one era often become the heroes of the next. Later, these same beliefs led many prominent and other Unitarians to become leaders in women's suffrage, while many conservative Christian leaders across the country opposed it. Preaching that women are equal and deserve a vote, or preaching that women are not equal and should not vote, who are the heretics? Who gets to decide? The same core values led many Unitarians to march with and in some cases die alongside Martin Luther King Jr. during the civil rights movement to end segregation and Jim Crow laws while the Southern Baptist churches, among others, who deem the Unitarians heretics to this day were speaking out against Martin Luther King and civil rights from their pulpits and in the streets, and using the Bible to endorse segregation then, segregation now, segregation forever. So who are the heretics? Now it's important to acknowledge that Unitarians never were and have never been 100% unified on these or any political or social positions. There's always been Uh, different people with different beliefs within any denomination, including ours. So there are examples, of course, of Unitarians complicit with racism, uh, homophobia, patriarchy, and other things, even right here in Tulsa and in this church. But just as I'm sure that there are counterexamples in the Southern Baptist Church and other churches of those who were going against the uh, dominant direction of their traditions in those times too, fighting to end slavery and for civil rights. Because my point here is not to try to make a case that our church or our leaders or our members have always been on the right side of history because that would be ridiculous. My point is that if someone from a more conservative church, Christian church, wants to debate whether their congregation is more moral or Christian than all souls, We have a strong position in that debate because we believe that the test of religion is someone's actions, not what they say they believe. So you have to decide, is it better to have, to follow the approved right beliefs but engage in unethical or maybe even evil actions or to stray from the orthodoxies of one's times and act in a loving and ethical way. Now, when I learned that the current documentary film that's in theaters across the country this summer that features all souls was going to be titled American Heretics, I was taken aback. And when the folks came here to to shoot these interviews and take pictures of us here in worship, I was thinking it seemed like they were sympathetic with our tradition and what we were trying to do. So when it came out with that title, I was very surprised. And that is until I saw the film. Then I realized that it's a brilliant documentary that raises the question of who are the real heretics in American culture? By the time the movie's over, it's clear that the Southern, I'm not trying to pick on anybody, but the Southern Baptists, which are the dominant Protestant tradition in this country, and other white Southern evangelical churches who claim to be the true disciples of Jesus were wrong on slavery, were wrong on Martin Luther King and civil rights. And I believe the movie is trying to make the case are wrong on Trump if their intention is to follow the Bible and be true to it. 
our reading this morning, done by our new assistant minister, Yadni Hailu, asks, which do you think is more important, what you believe or how you act? Here at All Souls, we claim that it is our actions that are the most important thing. And that's why we say love and place love beyond belief. The emphasis here is on love, not belief. But then who would be a heretic in this tradition? So in other words, what religious claims are truly in opposition to the values and traditions of this community? If someone claims, for example, that reason is bad and should not be used in religion, that would be heretical here. You know, I've been to church services, I've been to a couple at the Maybe Center, and the preachers went to great lengths to argue that reason is of the devil and that a person needs to not let their rational mind sway them from the doctrines of the church. That's heresy here in this congregation where we have built a tradition that affirms the value of reason in religion and in life. Now, another would be placing any one group of people or persons above another group of people or persons. That's a heresy in this church, which is dedicated to the equality of all people and believe that to be a core, the core essence of life. So who's a heretic? I guess it depends who you ask. All I can say is I do not aspire for a church of people who all think and believe alike. I prefer a church full of people who think for themselves. I prefer a church of people who are willing to risk prestige for justice. I prefer a church of people who are willing to be uncomfortable in the pursuit of a greater good. I prefer a church full of people who realize that the future is something that we can impact with our actions. People who realize that things do not change unless loving and courageous people step forward to do the work. I prefer a church like all souls, full of people who love boldly, who dare to dream of a better tomorrow and who are humble enough to change their opinion when the facts or the science or something else helps them realize that they're wrong and yet who are strong enough to help change society when they feel they are right. I'm not afraid of Yahweh or Allah, or Jesus, or any of the popular or unpopular gods. I'm afraid of what people do in the name of God. And what people do in the name of money, and culture, and fame, and politics, which have become like gods to many people. Our job is to watch out for the ego of the hour, to question the orthodoxy de jour. I invite you to live free of the gods of war and glory, free of the threats of purgatory and hell, free from fear of beliefs and people who are different. The true test of faith and of philosophies are the actions it inspires in its followers. If we're doing what we say we're about right, it leads us to love beyond belief. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You got it.
We're so happy you're visiting with us online today. We love connecting with people all across the country and around the world sharing our powerful message of love beyond belief. There's something new happening here. You can now join All Souls as a virtual member. Our virtual membership is designed for friends who live outside of Tulsa, Oklahoma and who want to engage with All Souls in a meaningful way. You can be part of an expanding family, a global family really, wherever you are. If you live in Oklahoma, Ohio, or Orange County, California, Canada, or Cameroon. By becoming a virtual member, you'll be able to deepen your connections with members and friends here in Tulsa and with members wherever you are. Each week, you'll receive special All Souls content tailored for you, our virtual members. Virtual members have access to pastoral care, to personal prayers, and also receive invitations to exclusive web events. You can learn more, and if you're ready, you can become a virtual member today by visiting allsoulschurch.org forward slash virtual membership. We're grateful our ministries are having a positive impact on your life, and we want to share the good news of Love Beyond Belief with more and more people. So no matter what, we need your support to keep this ministry growing and thriving. So please consider making a gift today. You can do so by texting Love BB for Love Beyond Belief to 73256 or simply visit our website. You are a blessing in our lives. May you be blessed. And be a blessing.